Hi everyone, again welcome to the next lecture of the LPS class, um, the LPS is essentially the um, um, the programming languages uh, that we are um, going through, um, as you know um, we started with um, the Unix, we covered Perl, then we moved on to Tickle and TK explaining the, the some of the advanced concepts in uh, Tickle and TK. Now we are actually going to Python. Um, we already finished a couple of lectures. I hope uh, you remember. Um, I just wanted to recap what we did um, in the last lecture. Um, so we went through the the very basic stuff, which is essentially how do we initially write a Python program, basically for just uh, uh, printing something um, and uh, then we talked about uh, so in this one we had covered several topics like uh, variables um, how the variables are um, um, what what are the different types of variables um, how do you actually print them how do you actually um, input every input uh, some value into the variable and what essentially are the variables so we covered several uh, key things. And then we also went through like some operators. Um, what are the keywords that are reserved in the language, uh, which we cannot use for variables, even like variable naming rules uh, that we covered uh, in the last uh, lecture. Um, then we also um, talked about um, 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 how do we form those variables, uh, etc. And then uh, we went to some conditionals essentially like so um, conditionals are if uh, ls and uh, uh, else um, I hope you remember those things basically when we talk about that um, then uh, we also talked about uh, functions um, the functions are essentially um, 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 the uh, starts with the def uh, as the keyword and then followed with the function name and then we we go into the the functions uh, one thing we also talked about in that context is the scope of a variable how um, the scope um, cannot be um, uh, cannot go into the function itself um, when you define the variable and how python actually and if you put the same name python actually um, adds a new variable and then um, assigns uh, values to that variable and then um, um, again the um, um, scope of the variable basically like finishes when uh, it is only the extent of the function so when it exits out of the function all the variables are gone it is all like thrown away um, and see we, we saw some examples as to how um, the, this can uh, this affects your programming um, we also saw like how to get around this uh, by using this uh, keyword called global inside the function with the um, uh, variable name so that it uh, you can actually pass the the variables that are outside of the function into the function and then uh, manipulate them. Um, so I think um, that was um, um, a good introduction essentially like in what we covered um, now I think uh, we will go into um, uh, Today's lectures um, basically I will be talking about uh, iterations. Um, so um, let's uh, go into that. Uh, so this is the, the new one that we are starting today. Um, so without much ado, um, I want to start that um, uh, chapter on uh, iterations. So um, let's begin. So the iteration consists of um, two major um, uh, things basically uh, while loops and uh, for loops um, and then uh, we also have a range function uh, which we will talk about um, and then we need to also like uh, we can do some controls in the inside the flow uh, so the flow control within the loops uh, such as break continue pass and then the loop else uh, so we will we will talk about those things uh, today um, so first of all the while loop essentially it is uh, uh, repeats a statement 
or a group of statements uh, while a given condition is true. Uh, it tests the condition before executing the loop body. So once it tests, it basically starts running the, the loop body, and then every time the body finishes, it again checks for the condition whether the condition is still valid. If the condition is true, it goes ahead and then does that loop until the condition becomes false. The for loop, on the other hand, um, that's actually uh, it is executes a sequence of statements um, multiple times and abbreviates the code that manages the loop variable. So the for loop is simply like I mean you can say like okay I want it to be n number of times or m number of times, and then basically like I mean it um, uh, um, the loop variable can be uh, abbreviated to um, be a some fixed uh, kind of quantity. Um, one thing with uh, both these conditions are basically like uh, there are nested loops. Uh, basically, you can use uh, while followed by for followed by while. So these kind of things can be like nested. So once finishes, then this will finish. Then this whole loop will finish. Um, now the definition for the these uh, flow control essentially the break statement this terminates the loop statement and transfers the execution to the statement immediately following the loop. So whenever this break condition basically that is satisfied the loop completely is broken and then it, the flow control just goes to the next uh, statement passed to the loop. The continue is more graceful in the sense that it causes the loop to skip the remainder of its body and immediately retest the condition uh, prior to the reiterating. So say like I mean you have a while and then you have a x y z then if if a equal to b and then you have break then you have again c d f and if this is your while loop then this a equal to b happens and um, then immediately like the loop is broken and then the condition is retested and it goes back to here in the break actually it, it falls through and then goes to a next statement say another if or something it goes to that whereas in a um, continuous statement it breaks and then goes back to the, the top and then it uh, tests the thing and then again goes around and around. Now the pass statement um, is um, um, this is used when a statement is required syntactically but you do not want any command or code to execute. So if you ask put an else then you can say like pass which is basically if A is not B then it just goes to C. Yeah. So this is basically like it is just for the syntax purposes we use the pass okay. So now let us look at uh, some of these um, conditions. So here example of a while loop we define i is 1 while i less than 4 colon we say print i and then i plus equals to 1 we know that this is the increment operator that we studied earlier. So the output will be like since i is 1 it becomes 1 and then here i gets increment 2 and it goes back and again i less than 4 that is still true so it executes so it prints 2 and then it adds one more so i becomes 3 and then it goes back and uh, now still this condition is uh, true so it goes down and it prints 3 and then now i equal to 4 i becomes 4 then it goes to this loop and then it says basically i is no less than 4 it is false so it just comes out so it only prints 1 2 and 3.
okay in uh, example for uh, for essentially so we specify for i in range 3 this is basically it is the same as 0 to 3 and then we say print i and then a comma essentially like these are the two things that you want to make sure. So um, basically like in this case um, um, i is printed as 0 because it is a 0 it starts with 0 1 and 2 and then when it is 3 it is um, out of the range so that um, it stops printing basically like I mean it increments and then when it becomes 3 it is the same so it uh, goes outside. So one of the key thing is this range uh, function so here is the definition range n returns the list of integers from 0 to n minus 1 so here it returns actually like it is 0 to 2 if uh, you specify one additional number for example here it is 0 10 2 this returns in an increment of this um, inside this so the, the incremental in, incremental is already built in into the range now. so this will return 0 2 4 6 and 8 because it starts from 0 to 10 in a, with an increment of 2 that is how we should read it. So if you do not specify then it assumes that it is like 0 through n with an incremental of 1 incremental 1 so range this can be made into a shortcut as range n for anything else you need to specify all the numbers. Okay. So here is a much more complicated um, loop. Um, so while some statement, uh, you can also define like for some item in object. Now there are some statements, and then we do a test one, and then cause it to break. So when test one is true it basically goes and then goes outside now the test 2 basically it is a continue so now when test 2 fails it basically goes back or test 2 passes it goes back to the top top of the loop and then we also use a pass statement which is test 3 so when test 3 is true it does nothing and basically the control group goes to the next. So here it is actually an else condition So now let us look at the loop else. The else statement after the loop is useful for taking care of the case where the item is in found in a list. For example, here um, search items dot uh, py. Um, mm -hmm. So for i in range 3, which is 0, 3, 1. If i equal to 4 then we print i found 4 and then break otherwise print do not care about i. Now obviously like I mean in this case um, i will never be 4 so after the loop after going through the, the 3 iterations it is going to exit the loop without anything because here basically it is like it says I do not care about and I so do not care, care about well, 0 1 2 
so those things get printed out by the statement. But now we have to also like print out. So so basically, like I mean, for the, this particular loop, if there is an else, basically then we can actually like I mean, once um, if never hit the break, then we can actually like do something. So here we put that break. So if it does not hit the break, then the else gets printed, and that says basically I searched but never found for. So this is the example for. Um, uh, using the loop else, uh, which is an interesting command uh, for um, um, in, in Python. In in more details. So um, one thing is basically like I mean you can use the for loop with collection data types. The collection data types are explained uh, in the next uh, chapter, um, and uh, this can be iterated through what are known as iter iterables. So for example, here uh, the simple one is for name in. Uh, this particular collection so and if the first letter which is denoted as the name 0 is M then we say print starts with M including the name otherwise we print name does not start with M so this prints or Motusem and Mika, it prints first one, and then for Ryan, it prints the next one. So we will we will learn about uh, some of these lists and strings uh, in the later uh, part part of the um, this lecture. So now let's see um, what kind of uh, what is parallel traverses. So for this we use a, another um, command called the zip uh, for doing the parallel traversal. So what is the parallel traversal? Use things together. We say like I mean, okay, A B for A B in zip. These two lists A and B. We can say like print A, then uh, the star B is A times B. So now what uh, Python does is it groups these two together, these two together, and these two together. So that's where we can traverse two lists in parallel. This is all very useful because um, when we have like coordinate systems where you need to uh, come up quickly with uh, an addition of uh, two co two coordinates you can actually like do it in just one command rather than actually spending multiple uh, commands. So here the output is going to be like 4, 10 and 18 because it is multiplying 1 times 4 then 2 times 5 and then 3 times 6. So that is pretty much um, that covers on the 
uh, iterators and uh, how we can perform iterations. Uh, now we will go into the strings as a variable type. Um, so we will talk about the string basics, the escape sequences, slices is another uh, key concept. And then um, we will use we will do some block codes, uh, some formatting and then uh, the string methods. So strings um, are delimited by single or double quotes. The, both of these we saw in um, um, tickle. Uh, one thing is basically uh, that uh, Python is actually uses um, Unicode, so strings are not limited to just ASCII characters. So Unicode has much more characters than just ASCII characters. ASCII characters amounts to probably about uh, 65 of them. So here we can use much more than that. The empty string is denoted by having nothing in between the delimiter. So here a single quote delimiter, nothing between that. That's an empty string. Um, we can access the elements in the string uh, with the square brackets. Uh, the indexing starting from zero. So if you say like I mean say the string and then the third element actually it's one zero one two three so that is k the k gets printed out and then the other thing is uh, even the strings are immutable we saw this uh, for the, the variables variables are immutable in the sense that we cannot change the value uh, of the variables here it is the same thing the strings are immutable so that you cannot assign a snake 3 to p and uh, expect that that work because snake 3 is always going to be k. To access the last element of a string we can have uh, two ways. Um, basically you can for for example in this uh, snake if you want to access this one that is uh, 0 1 2 3 4 5 you can say the snake 5 or you can also say um, negative 1 so the minus 1 gets the last element of the string and then the negative indices work backwards so this is minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 minus 4 minus 5 so they work this way and then the positive will go this way so the strings actually also have the concept of um, um, being raw string and usually the raw string starts with the character R uh, before the delimiter. So if you say like R, then the delimiter some string that is a raw string, and they are interpreted literally. So there is a, um, you cannot change anything there. Now you can convert any numbers into uh, the string and vice versa for example we can say like int of string 42 that is the actual value 42 and then string of 20.4 now appears within the quotes we see. We can also um, compare strings with is equal operator that is uh, the double equal to. Uh, this is just like in C and C++ so we do not have to write specific um, command for um, the strings in Perl we saw that actually like this is so um, to write that basically um, we just say basically A equal to B and then that returns true.
Now, a good thing in uh, um, in um, Python is that uh, Python provides um, the way to increment um, the or um, add two strings or append a string to another one. Uh, by just using uh, this um, addition symbol, so if you do a Chattanooga plus Tennessee, now and we want to print the location just print like uh, with the space. Now let's look at uh, some of the escape characters um, and what their meanings are. So these are the escape sequences. So the backslash is a very common one. That's uh, basically for escape, um, and then the meaning is just backslash. So backslash, backslash should be just backslash. So um, that's the other thing. Now uh, quotation is also like the same thing. So this escape sequence is basically the, the, the backslash. And if you say like I mean backslash n is for the new line, and then the backslash t is for tab. Um, now backslash n and id is the unicode database id for that particular thing now um we can also de represent the 16 um, bit hex by just going like uh, escape under 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 uh, um Escape and then uh, lowercase u followed by the hexadecimal number. If you specify an uppercase uh, and followed by a uh, hexadecimal number, it treats that as a Unicode 32 bit. And then, if you specify like um, backslash x and then h h, and that is the hex digits um, notation or values for h h, and then backslash uh, zero is a null bit, so it doesn't end the string. And then, if you just specify um, like a n n n, this is uh, actually uh, octal notation. Uh, that is in this within n has to be from 0 to 7 in octal that is how it is then um, some other sequences are also supported basically for example backslash c x is a shorthand for control x and then there is also like a vertical tab that you can Instantiate which is backslash V instead of backslash T. Similarly, like there are plenty of other characters because it is a unicorn, it has a rich set of uh, various characters. Now let's talk about the block quotes. Um, we can um, use triple quotes to represent multiple line strings. So here we have a triple line, triple quotes, and then basically like all the way up to here. This entire thing is treated as just one string and it's assigned to Lincoln, but it works because of this, uh, triple quotes here. Now um, we talked about the concatenation operator um, before I go into the string. 
there is also a repeater operation which is essentially the star similar to tickle. So if you say like um, my name and Stu then it turns basically my name my name. So um, Uh, one thing that uh, I also want to want you to understand is um, we start, talked about um, this um, things. You can actually like specify them as slices. So you can have like a small slice of a zero three, which basically is here. It's a S N A K. So those kind of slicing is also possible. Now let's go talk about the string formatting. And we specify percentage reading, so it replaces this basically hello here, so it becomes hello, welcome to Python. The formatting um, actually creates new string because, as you know, the strings are immutable, so you cannot change it. So the format actually creates a new string. So a printf style formatting um, also works we can format multiple variables into one string by collecting them into a triple so basically a comma separated list limited by parentheses and after the percentage character. So here we say basically uh, the grade for percentage s is percentage 4 1 f so here we can actually see how that will get translated. Um, so here basically um, it specifies uh, Tom and then uh, this number gets converted into 4 plus 1 so that is 76.1. So basically like I mean it takes and then based on the, the format string it formats it. So here it is 4 digits prior to 0 and then 1 after 0. So it formats it as 76.1 it rounds it. The string formats can also refer to dictionary keys. Um, so again here percentage name. So got a grade something and then name Bob grade and uh, is 2.5 and then this again it is a um, integer so it basically converts it into 2. So some more formatting um, basically uh, percentage C is for character percentage S for string conversion um, we have STR uh, prior to the formatting so we write as STR and then one of the some number and then basically like that is formatted um, percentage i is uh, for signed uh, decimal integer percentage d is for unsigned decimal integer 
uh, and then um, percentage uppercase x is for the hexadecimal and then the lowercase x is for uh, the lower case lower uh, integer or lower uh, case letters uh, which are used inside the hexadecimal so if you want to if you want to format um, this into a or say like a 15 the first one which is the uh, uppercase x will format this as uppercase f and then whereas the lower case will format this as lowercase f So now let's look at uh, how we can step through the string. We already saw this uh, some of the stuff. Um, so we have to treat the string as a collection of characters. So it has uh, some properties in common with the other collections like lists and tuples. So we can step through this. For example, like you can define like C in the string print C that prints one one character at a time because that's what the C takes the value of. And uh, we can also do some uh, checking. Basically, like if A in snakes, then the answer comes as true. So now let us look at uh, the slices in some more details. So here we can actually give um, snakes one column three that returns basically the first two uh, actually like the second and the third rather that is n. And here actually like the both are optional basically if you specify just a and then without anything it just uh, provides a copy of the string Okay, now let us talk about the string method. Um, the strings again, the, it is a class with uh, many built in methods. These methods create new strings um, uh, that, that create the new strings that need to be assigned basically. So, you need to assign a string variable to these methods basically, or you know, using the method. Um, and so it goes into that particular variable and then um, the strings are immutable so you cannot change basically so you cannot change in place that is the reason why you need to assign it to a new variable. So let us look at some of these methods um, basically um, and these are all built in methods to manipulate strings. So the first one is um, capitalize this capitalize basically it capitalizes the first letter of the string so it capitalizes first letter now what about center the center actually has um, um, an argument width we can also provide another argument called fill character. And what it does is it returns 
a space padded string centered to the total width columns this is total of the width columns so whatever that width that we specify and we can actually specify this fill characters if you don't specify it is a space otherwise um, you can it can fill with whatever that is so um, it treats the string it expands the string and puts those uh, fill characters in the middle and it expands it to fill the width essentially so this is another nifty command now we can also say count um, we give like a substring a star a start index and the end index basically um, here it counts how many times this substring occurs in the string or in a substring of uh, the string if starting index um, beginning and ending index end are given. So these are two optional ones. So if you don't specify and basically count substring, it just sees how many times the substring occurs in the string. Um, if not, it actually uh, now um, gives basically like I mean it, it also meaning like if you are giving both the start index and the end index, it starts from that start index and the ends at the end index and look for the substring so it takes a substring and then it massages that for to find the substring specification inside the count um, then we also have a find and the find is also again a substring and start and then end the, these two are optionals um, the Find again if um, it determines if the this particular substring occurs in a string or in a substring of the string starting from uh, start to the end, uh, and um, it returns the index if found. Otherwise, it returns minus one. So it returns index. Where this thing, this substring is occurring, or minus one. Then there are other other ones also. Um, we can also like um, decode and encode strings. We can um, along with this, we can also see uh, another one which is uh, ends with, which is. Um, Ends with it has a suffix beginning and ending. This actually determines uh, if the string or the substring of string ends with a suffix. Returns true if ends with the suffix or it uh, returns uh, false. It falls um, otherwise. Is digit again? It is um, um, opposite of that, basically, where it returns uh, uh, true if um, the string contains only digits and false otherwise. Is lower is basically if at least, if at least one cased character and all cased characters are in the lower case. And then we also have is numeric is another one, so that's uh, that's another one. And then the join is basically like that to take multiple sequences 
and join them. So, and there are uh, others also. So, we also have another method called the replace. Um, it it really doesn't replace again. Go back to your first principle, which is strings are immutable, but it makes new strings with the replacement performed. So here is an example. We define a, a variable string variable a with a b c d e f g, and then another uh, variable b, which is um, now we are going to call it as a dot replace c with uppercase c so now if you want to print b it's basically a b uppercase c d e f whereas um, um, the a is simply a b c d e f g okay so and then uh, there are more uh, examples um, of the methods, so I'll go through this one. Um, so here um, we can actually like um, say that basically, so the, the we define a variable uh, a this whole sentence, and then now we say like I mean. Um, find essentially so we define the location to be a find boring so it's right here so whatever the number of characters to this that stored in the location now what we need to do is um, we should add that whatever the location we add fun to it And then now um, we print a. Um, actually, like here, it should be uh, the replace command. Essentially, no, not uh, we can. We have to replace this with nothing, and then add one to it. And then we define another one uh, B which is and and then we say like join car trucks motorcycles so the and is applied to join these uh, different uh, strings so it becomes cars and trucks and motorcycles. Then if you say like I mean so now C is defined as a split of B or B dot split and we print C it prints each one as a different element in the um, string list or string collection. And then if you specify again like I mean we um, split the, the string B but with this particular um, string, so then it takes out that string and only reports uh, cars, trucks, and motorcycles. So here we are using like several things: find, there is also like a replace, then um, and, um, and then join, and then split. So all these are different uh, strings. Methods. Now let's talk about the regular expressions. The regular expressions are a way to do pattern matching. The basic concept is uh, pretty much it's uh, the same as Java or Perl that we already are, we are used to this. So. The common regular expression in a syntax the dot matches any character but new line 
then the caret matches the beginning of the string and then the dollar matches the end of the string. So these are the things that we already know from Perl and we carried over to tickle also for the same syntax. And then a star is any number of whatever comes before this. So x star will be like x x x x, x whatever number of x. And then plus is essentially like only one item. So if it is a n plus, um, or this will be a n, n. not just only those. Now um, there is also like um, the the R um, function basically, which means just the R of uh, it's uh, either the first string or the second string. You can match either one of them. And then when we escape W, that is basically like any alternative characters, and then uh, escape D becomes uh, any digit, and escape S becomes the non-white space, and then um, uppercases are just exactly opposite of these, so that's uh, you just have to just remember that. So uppercase W matches non alphanumeric D non digits, and then uppercase S is non white space. And then if you specify it in the square bracket, basically uh, A I O U, it matches any of A E I R I O R U. So any letters it can match, but if you don't specify the square bracket, it exactly matches that string, which is junk. So some reg examples uh, essentially, like I mean, so here um, um, this is basically like we are saying uh, import R E stands for the importing the regular expression model. So once we export uh, the regular exp uh, expression module, so we specify basically like in file we are opening this text uh, test or text uh, in a read mode, and then we for the lines essentially like I mean we just start reading the line uh, with this method read lines. So just watch out. Um, I'll be talking about some of these things basically like the method, but um, this will be like coming in the future. But this is again another method uh, you can see this is a read lines is a method that is applicable for file structure and then that is why we are calling the in file and then read lines and then once we re read all the lines we just say this is the end of Now we can actually um, replace all PCI 3 with PSI 4s so the way that we can do is like we can say match string. Um, the regular expression compile so this is the method for the regular expression and then basically like um, it is a, a raw string that is specified as PSI 3 and then we also specify another um, 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 method the ignore case in RE so it ignores the case and it compiles this and then for the line the lines the lines that we read here. We use the match string and then we say like sub um, r psi 4 and then the line and then we print that those lines. So basically like I mean this means that we um, read all the lines and we replaced any anywhere where we can see psi 3 with uh, psi 4. A um, couple of things about the that uh, example we needed to compile the I mean first of all the regular expression module needs to be imported that is the uh, using the import command then um, we also need to compile the regular expression with uh, the re compile and then the r character is means the raw string that we already saw that basically so we do not have to escape every special character. And then the ignore case is another uh, it's an uh, optional argument um, another would be like uh, dot all basically um, which is like it matches all the strings essentially. We also have another one called the uh, multi line which is REM which makes uh, 
the carat and dollar match after and before each line in the string. So now let us uh, talk some more about the regular expressions. The regular expression compile is an optional step. Um, it's more efficient if we are doing a lot of regular expressions. Um, we can also do just regular expression search and then regex and the subject basically, or even regular expression match. That's also we can do. That's an alternate syntax for without doing the compile. And then the match only looks for match at the beginning of the line. Um, it does not need to match the whole string just the beginning the search attempts to match throughout the string until it finds a match the find all regex uh, the subject returns the array of all known overlapping matches so alternatively we can do basically like uh, find filter with uh, regex and object uh, and the subject And then the other thing that to note is also that match, search, find iteration, find all, they do not support an optional third argument for regex matching plans. You can start regex with uh, question mark one, question mark s, question mark n, etc. So now we come to the split command. So the regex split basically returns an array of uh, strings. So we saw that basically like how we can split the strings are all the parts of the subject besides the parts that match. If two matches are adjacent in subject, then the split will include an empty string. So here is one example. Like I mean, lines uh, set as up, uh, upgrade PSI. 3 to PSI 4, PSI 3 is an, was an excellent program. So we here we say like match string PSI 3 we get a match and then for each of these match strings we just print I. So um, So the result will be um, This much, and then it gets this much, and then it also splits here. So this is also gone, and then up to here. So, so now you can see how the answer or how this i is being printed. Basically, it prints upgrade the as one, then program to PSI four is one, and then uh, was an excellent program is the third one. So um, let us um, actually continue the, um, the the remainder of the strings in the next lecture so there are a few more uh, things that we need to cover before we can go into the next chapter. Okay, uh, thank you very much, uh, and then we will talk more uh, 